Hi guys, welcome to this section of uh, this set of videos. What we're going to be doing here in this section, um, what we're going to be talking about is how do we prove lines are parallel? So what you've seen, sort of the theme, right, of this uh, chapter, what we've been really sort of focusing on is angle relationships that are formed when you have a transversal that cuts parallel lines or when lines intersect. And so now what we want to do in the previous section, we talked about those angle relationships. Now we want to see, can we use those angle relationships to help us prove that lines are parallel, which actually leads us right into our essential question. So this is the question you need to be able to answer by the time we get to the end of this set of videos, the end of this set of notes, and it's simply that. How do you prove that lines are parallel? How can you do that? Well, the way that we're gonna do that is by learning several things. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff together um, and our objectives, our learning targets are gonna be the things that we're gonna learn, the things we need to know in order to help us answer that question. So here's what we're gonna look at. Students will prove and use theorems about parallel lines given angle measures. Then what you guys will do, students, will use angle pairs to find measures and angles um, that will ensure that two lines are parallel, to prove that two lines are parallel. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this by quickly taking a second and reviewing. We talked about this back in chapter one, section four. Chapter one, section four, we talked about conditional and converse statements. You should remember from chapter one, section four, that if P then Q statement. It's a conditional statement that simply says if P then Q. What this means is that if the hypothesis then the conclusion, right? Where P is the hypothesis and P is the conclusion. I've got one for you right here. If two angles are supplementary. If two angles are supplementary, that's the hypothesis. If they're supplementary, then conclusion, they equal 180 degrees. They'll sum to 180 degrees. Now, the converse, right? If you remember back to chapter one, section four, the way that you write a converse statement is you switch, right? I take my hypothesis and my conclusion and I have them switch places, right? So the converse would be if Q, oh, no, no, that's my pen. If Q, then P, right? So the conditional statement is if P, then Q. The converse would be if Q, then P. I got a perfect example right here. If two angles sum to 180 degrees, notice that was my conclusion up here. Now it's my hypothesis. If two angles sum to 180 degrees, then they are supplementary angles. Well, this then they were supplementary angles is my conclusion. But up here, it was my hypothesis. See how they've switched places? So that's the way that a converse statement works. You'll take your conditional statement, if P then Q, you'll switch the hypothesis and the conclusion to write the converse statement. That's exactly what we're gonna do here in this set of notes to help us prove parallel lines. What we did in the previous section, if you go back and watch the uh, videos for chapter four, section two, we got uh, a postulate and two theorems. Here's the first one. This postulate, it, you'll remember from the previous section, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then pairs of same side interior angles are supplementary, right? Same side interior angles sum to 180 degrees. We saw that in the previous section. Here's what we're going to do in this section, this guy right here. We're going to do the converse, right? The converse of the same side interior angle postulate. I'm going to take this if then statement, check this out. If this is if P then Q, right? If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of same side interior angles are supplementary. To write the converse, I'm going to switch P and Q. So this one should be if Q, then P. Let's find out. If two lines are cut by a transversal, so that a pair of same side interior angles, look, same side interior angles, now if same side interior angles, see how it's now the first thing I write? then are supplementary, then the lines are 
parallel, right? I've switched it, converse. I've switched my P and my Q, my, my hypothesis and conclusion have switched places. But please notice what this does, right? What I'm saying is, if two pairs of same side interior angles are supplementary, then what do I know? Then I know those lines have to be parallel. I can prove parallel lines, right? I said, right, we're proving parallel lines. Using this converse statement, I can prove parallel lines if I can show you that same side interior angles are supplementary. If, if they sum to 180 degrees, then the lines must be parallel. That's a proof, right? That's proving parallel lines. I got two more for you. Check this out on the next page of the notes. You'll recognize our theorems, right? Again, back in the previous section, alternate interior angle theorem. We talked about this one in the previous section. This is an if then statement. If P then Q. Write the converse. Switch the P and the Q. Here's what it says. If two lines cut by a transverse, so that any pair of alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. See how I'm using this now to prove parallel lines? If I can show you alternate interior angles are congruent, if I can show you that, then I've proven that the lines have to be parallel. They have to be, right? So this is my converse statement, and I'm gonna use it to prove parallel lines. One more corresponding angles theorem. We saw this theorem in the previous section. We use this to help us solve problems on where you were given a value of x and we did a little bit of algebra to find the value of x, right? We use this theorem in the previous section. We want to look at the converse. Right? Again, it's in if p then q, right? I have a hypothesis and a conclusion. So to write the converse, switch places. Here we go. If two lines cut by a transversal, so that any pair of corresponding angles are congruent. If I can show you corresponding angles are congruent, guess what I've proven? The lines are parallel, right? So what we saw in the previous, right, this theorem says, if lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. Turn it around. If I can show you that corresponding angles are congruent, then I've proven that the lines must be parallel. Let me show you how this works in a real quick example problem. Here's what we've got. We've got a guy um, who is a mosaic designer, right? This guy's gonna build us a mosaic out of tiles, right? And he's using quadrilateral shaped tiles to make an ornamental design. Here is one of those tiles. Each tile is congruent to the one shown below. So this tile right here. All right, here's what the designer did. The designer uses the colored tiles to create pattern shown here. So here we go. He's got a green quadrilateral, then a blue one, then a yellow one, and then a purple or pink, whatever it looks like on your screen, right? But the idea is this. Each of those tiles is congruent, is exactly the same as this one right here. All right, here's the question. Here's what I want to know. Can you find a way, can you find a way to prove that lines L1, line L1, actually here, let me do it in red, this line right here, L1, and L2, L2, are parallel lines. Can we find a way to prove they're parallel lines? Now again, remember, in geometry, you can never assume something about a figure or a diagram, right? You must in fact, actually, the only thing you can assume is that they are not drawn to scale, all right? So you can't just look at this and say, oh, they look like they're parallel and use that as a proof. No, saying that something looks like it's parallel doesn't cut it. That's not good enough. You cannot assume figures or diagrams are drawn to scale. So we have to find some other way to prove those lines are parallel. So here we go. What I've done, can you find a way to prove that those two lines are parallel using the values of the marked angles? Well, here we go. I've got, let me do this one. Um, this, this tile right here, hopefully you can see it. That one is blue. This one right here is green. What I'm trying to do is prove L1 is parallel to L2. Here we go. 
What is the measure of angle two? Yeah, you know each of these tiles looks like this guy. So that means that the measure of angle two, measure of angle two is equal to 60 degrees, right? That's angle two right there, which is that corresponding angle right there. So I know the measure of angle two is 60 degrees. What about the measure of angle one? Yeah, yeah. this is angle one right here, 120 degrees. So the measure of angle one is 120 degrees, 120 degrees. Well, here's what we've got, right? We have right a theorem that says consecutive, consecutive interior angles must sum to 180 degrees. So measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two must equal 180 80 degrees, right? That is the consecutive interior angle theorem. Plug it in. Is this true? Does angle one and angle two sum to 180 degrees? Plug and chug. Plug and chug, don't fat finger something on your calculator. The measure of angle one is 120, plus the measure of angle two is 60. Well, does 120 plus 60 equal 180? Yeah, you bet it does. I get measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees. So here's what I've done. Because the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two equals 180, I have just shown you that court or consecutive interior angles, consecutive interior angles, sum to 180 degrees. The only way that happens, that is only possible if L1 and L2 are parallel lines. So L1 must be parallel to L2. That is the converse, right? I've proven that by the converse of the same side interior angles. Converse same side interior angles. Let me show you right here. Um, yeah. Converse same side interior angles. Here's what it says. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that, so that here's the important part, so that a pair of same side angle one and angle two, same side interior angles are supplementary. I just showed you angle one and angle two sum to 180 degrees. They're supplementary. If that's true, then the lines have to be parallel. Look what I just showed you. I just showed you angle one and angle two sum to 180 degrees. If that's true, if angle one and angle two are supplementary, if they sum to 180 degrees, then the lines must be parallel thanks to the converse of same side um, interior angles. Right? So that's the way that we're going to use these converse properties to help us prove that two lines are parallel. All right? I got several more examples for you guys on the next page of the notes. So if you head on over there, I'll meet you guys there.